Kerry Rogers, Packetbomb.com. Have a capture here of a throughput test. Uh, I want to look at one particular part of this. Right here at the beginning, we have something that says TCP fast retransmission. Now this is Wireshark telling you based on what it sees, it sees a fast retransmission. The question is, is it really a fast retransmission or not? We're gonna jump into that and see if it is or not. This is a capture on the client side. Do you know why? Let me tell you. You know this is on the client side because the delta between the SYN and SYNAC is there is a <laughs> there is a delta between the SYN and SYNAC is what I meant to say. If this was on the server side, the delta would be between the SYNAC and the ACK, but it's not. So think about that. Where you have to, you have to, when you're doing analysis, keep in mind where the capture is and from what perspective you're looking at the data. It makes all the difference in the world. So the client sends a SYN, it goes across the WAN, it hits the server, the server sends a SYNAC back, and it takes 103 milliseconds. If this were on the server side, we would see a SYN come in, a SYNAC immediately, because there's no delay, and then the SYNAC has to go across the WAN, the ACK has to come back, and you would see the delay here. So we know this is on the client side. That's important. Now, so the question is, this is a simple wget test across a WAN throughput test. We see this right off the bat. We see TCP previous segment not captured. That means the sequence numbers, we, we've, we've dropped a packet somewhere because here's the previous segment and the next expected sequence number is 7976, but the one that actually shows up is 9344. Now if we do the math on that, we can, we'll see that we're missing one, one packet because it's 1368 uh, is the TCP length. You can see here in this TCP length column that I've added, you can also see it down here. So if you do the math between what the expected next sequence number is and what the actual next one is, we can see that we missed one packet. That's just some simple math. TCP sequence number analysis, you need to be able to do that. So think about it. The client says, okay, here comes some data. We're acting, everything's great. And all of a sudden, well, we missed one. So this acknowledgement is saying, hey, I have received uh, the data 7975 up to 7975. And the next sequence number I expect to receive is 7976. That's not what it gets. So when that happens, TCP says, nope. It will act again and say, no, I wanted 7976. However, because it did receive this segment, if it supports selective acknowledgements, in the options, it will put a SAC block, selective acknowledgement block, saying, hey, by the way, I did receive this bit of data. You don't have to send it to me again. So from uh, 9344 to 0712, see down here? It's saying, I got that one. But if you look at my acknowledgement field, I still want 7976. So then we get another bit of data. This time it is actually the next one in sequence 0712. Here is the next sequence number. That is the next sequence number 0712 with the next uh, sequence number to be 2080. If you look at the ACK number, it hasn't changed. It's saying, guess what? I still haven't received 7976, but it does move so the initial, this first, this is called the left. Let me expand this. The left edge didn't change. It still matches this 9344, but the right edge moved over to include this segment that it received, 2080. 2080, right? Yeah. See, there it is. So now we're saying, hey, I received both this one and this one, 
but I still need 7976. And guess what? Here it is, 7976. So a fast free transmission is basically when the receiver gets three duplicate acts. So we have the first acknowledgement up here, 7976. We have a du another act here. This is DUPAC, you know, Wireshark listed as number one. And then we have number two. So we've received the same acknowledgement number three times in a row. And TCP says, okay, after three times, I'm going to not wait for my retransmission timer to expire. I'm just going to go ahead and send it to you right away. And here it is. And so Wireshark says fast retransmission. So that's what happened, right? Nope. There are two things, two things in this capture to tell you it is not, in fact, a fast retransmission. And here's why. First reason. So as I just explained how fast retransmissions work, the sender has to receive three acts of the same act number before it will do a fast retransmission. So here's one, here's two, here's three. So it, the sender has to receive this third act before it will do the fast retransmission. If we go back to the top, remember the round trip time is 103 milliseconds. If you look at the delta between that third act that would trigger the fast retransmission and the fast retransmission, it's, it's less than a millisecond. How is that possible? It didn't have time, this act didn't have time to get across to the sender and this retransmission happen. How, so that doesn't make sense. There's not enough time for this act to cross the WAN, hit the sender, the sender go, oh, here's my third act, let me retransmit this segment, and then it comes back. This should have been 103 millisecond delay here. Didn't happen. That's tip number one. Tip number two is if you look at the IP ID of segment of, of packets coming from the sender, this is 49742. Click on the next one. 49743. 49744. 49745. You can see they are sequential. Now that's not always the case. It depends on the TCP implementation or the IP TCP IP implementation, right? Um, sometimes it's random, which is sort of a security thing because uh, these IP IDs are incremented based on the number of packets it sends, not per connection, but just per stack, per total. So if there's lots of clients talking to the server, there might be some skips in here, like five packets or 10 packets. You can kind of get an idea of how busy a host is based on the, the, the gaps between the IP IDs. So to, as a security measure to reduce that visibility, some stacks randomize the IP ID. This is not one of them. So 746, 747, 748, and then 750. So we missed 749. So this fast read transmission, if we look at it, it's 749, which means it's actually the packet that belongs up here. If it was a real fast read transmission, it's a brand new packet, right? It would have a new IP ID. So the previous one was 752. So this one would have, I'm sorry, 751. So this one would be 752, but it's not, it's 749. So it belongs up here, which means this is just an out of order sequence. This segment got held up somewhere in the WAN. These other two showed up first, and then this one showed up. Time to live is 56. What is it for this? Also 56. So it's not asymmetric routing. Uh, I mean, it's still possible. I would think one thing you could look at for asymmetric routing is if the number of hops between client and server is different. Uh, but the TTL is 56 on all these. So maybe it got stuck in a queue somewhere, maybe a QoS issue. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I mean, TCP can handle this. It's not breaking anything. I just want to walk through this so you can understand 
you can't always take Wireshark's uh, expert infos as the gospel truth. Jesus did not come down and tell you this. Uh, Jesus is not a Wireshark expert. He might be. I don't know. I didn't read that book of the Bible. Uh, it might be in there. But this is not a fast free transmission. End of story. Uh, things to know. Have a great night. I know I did because I'm on my, I don't know how many, how many scotches I've had at this point. All right. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus.